Hello, everyone. How's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Old World, shall we? Well, uh, Hooded Horse was kind enough to provide a key to this game because there's a brand new DLC uh, that just came out, and I'm getting a chance to see it. I believe it's called The Sacred and the Profane, and I've never played any of this game, and there's, I think, two DLCs out now for it, so I'm going to be playing with the base game and both DLCs, uh, and we're going to start from the very beginning as I'm a new player to this, so I'm going to do the learn to play and see what this is all about. All right, tutorial one, learn to play the old world. Old world takes place in classical antiquity focused around the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East, where you lead one of seven nations who left their mark on history. You begin with a single settler and must forge an empire in a world filled with already developed nations. Interesting. This is the first in a series of tutorials to help you learn the basics of Old World. These tutorials will not cover everything in the game, but will walk you through the basics of ruling your nation. Pop-up windows will present the information you need to get started. Along the way, you will be given goals to accomplish. Completing these goals will give you practical experience leading a nation. Click Start Game to proceed. Now, if I mouse over Nation, it says Nations are the major states that are vying for victory in Old World. So, I don't know really anything about this, but I see Hexes, I see Settler, so I'm assuming it's like a 4X, but I, I really don't know. Let's dive in. Alright. Old World. In Old World, you'll explore the map with Scouts, expand your nation by founding cities on city sites, exploit harvestable resources and luxuries and recruit armies to exterminate rival nations and tribes or negotiate trade with them. It's your choice. Click the button at the bottom of this pop-up window. I'm ready to explore the old world. I gotta say, game looks great. I love the style of it. The sound um, and the UI look amazing. Uh, game Essentials. Well done. Now let's cover the essential items you need to know to be able to complete these tutorials. The menu button where you can exit the game is at the top left. I see it. The hamburger icon. Uh, tutorial goals will be displayed at the top right so you can refer to them easily. When you get them, the mini-map is at the bottom right. The cycle button is at the bottom left. And will show any actions you have left to make one by one. When all actions have been cycled through, the cycle button will show end year. By clicking, it will proceed to the next turn. The buttons above the cycle button allow you to cycle through specific categories, being events, civilian units, military units, scouts, and cities. The final button, the check mark, is an end year button, which you can use if you have completed all the actions you wish to perform this turn. To move the map, hold the left mouse button down and move the mouse to move the map. Or, if you're playing in full screen mode, move the mouse cursor to the edge of the screen and make the map scroll in that direction. Zoom in and out using your mouse wheel. Click the button at the bottom to continue. Alright. Orders. Orders are an important feature of Old World. Units can move multiple times each turn, but each move consumes one order. Other actions, such as attacking or building, also consume orders. Your available orders can be seen in the lower left corner in the leader panel beside the scroll icon. Interesting. The concentric blue rings around a selected unit represent the number of orders required to move a given distance. Each line passed means another order consumed to reach the destination. The rate at which you produce orders each turn is determined by your leader's legitimacy but can also be augmented by certain improvements. You may also buy and sell orders by clicking the scroll icon in the leader panel. Order production rates scale with the difficulty level. Note that if you do not use all of your orders in the turn, it does not matter. Excess orders are sold off for money after you finish your turn. Interesting. What an interesting concept. Okay, so it is a 4X. You know, so immediately I'm thinking Civ, of course, which is... Uh, the hexagonal based 4x I have the most experience with but they're putting lots of different spins uh, on it already I will select the scout oh okay 
Let's issue some orders. Select a scout on the map by clicking on them. Note that this goal, as with all goals, will be shown in the top right. Okay. All right. So here we are. And cool. All right. Game looks great. Fantastic. All right, here I am. And here's my scout. Uh, wow, the UAI is actually... I mean, it's compact and nice and everything and slick, but it's actually a little small for me. Uh, trying to read everything. Okay, I actually changed the UI. I scaled it up to make it larger. Um, the, these panels in the bottom right and left are a little bit big, I'll give you that. But I think that this top ribbon is a lot easier for me to read. Uh, so I did that in the accessibility section, by the way. Okay, so here I am uh, with my settler. And you can see he's got a little telescope icon. Oh, he's a scout, that's right. Uh, so I'm going to click on him. Oh boy, scouts have longer range of vision and higher movement speed than other units, making them perfect for exploring the map. When your scout is on a hill, it can see further. And I love that when you're reading this, you can see that any of these words that you can mouse over, uh, it'll blow up a tooltip that gives you more information about it. It's kind of in a bold and slight different color. Um... But vision range is reduced by trees. A scout is hidden when they are on a tile with trees, making them great at checking what your enemies are up to. The terrain your units move over will also have an impact on how far they can move each turn. Hills, sand, crossing a river, scrub, and trees all add an extra movement point. Rivers within your borders only require two-thirds of a movement point. Roads within your borders or unclaimed land only require two-thirds of a movement point. Let's explain this valley, shall we? Move the scout to the... Or explore this valley, rather. Move your scout to the north and cross the river by right-clicking any red highlighted tiles while the scout is selected. Okay. So, uh, they want us to move north through the valley. And if I, for example, go up here, you can see that it's going to take me six orders to do that. Um... Or, am I reading that right? Why is it only five to move here? Or is that how many I'll have remaining? Um, well, let's find out. It looks like right here it says I have... I get ten orders per turn, and I have seven right now. So I'm just going to move right here. Explore the valley. When starting a new game, the map is unexplored. The many dark corners of the world and the secrets contained therein await your discovery. Send out your scout to peel back the fog and uncover mysterious ruins, hostile barbarians, a multiplicity of tribes and other nations, and various exotic creeds you might adopt as your state religion. Rumor has it that foul barbarians are encamped at the end of this valley. Send your scout north to confirm these suspicions. Remember, each concentric blue ring around the unit indicates an order, when scouting, it is a good idea to only move up to the first blue ring each time so that you can react to things you uncover that were hidden in the fog. That's great. Okay. Um, um, I gotta tell you, I don't know what they're talking about, about concentric blue rings. Do they mean the the dots that are above my character that are like white and red and black? Am I... I feel like I'm not... I mean, these aren't rings. These are blue halos which indicate like how far I can move. Or maybe these are quote-unquote rings. Right, okay. So this would take one order to move this far? Is that what's going on? And But this would take two. Yes, I think that's it. So they are kind of rings. They're like hexagonal area of influence that show you how many orders it'll take to move up here. Um, your scout may use four orders per turn before it's fatigued. Oh, so these are indicating how many orders per turn they can go. Once your scout is fatigued, click end year to proceed to the next turn. Continue exploring further up the valley using clicks of the right button of your mouse to, to issue each move order. So I'm going to move all the way up here. 
and that took one order. So that's only one order. Wow. Okay, so immediately, like, I guess I'm passing a year each time, but unlike, uh, you can also use the arrow keys, by the way, to move around the map. Unlike Civ, I can do a whole lot. Like, this guy is moving a whole bunch in one turn here. All right, I will... Um, it's interesting, because if I wanted to move here and then uncover the Fog of War, this would actually count as um, an order of the four that it can use per turn. And so it's better to actually move to this extension of their movement range. And I'll move... Now, if I move inside the trees, I'll be hidden. Um, but I'm not worried. I'm going to go up here. Okay. So we're done. So we're going to click end the year. Uh, bonus effect... Orders, starts goal, select your scout. Um, oh, this is all the information I've been giving. Okay, end the year. Okay, now I have 21 orders, which is a lot. That's great. All right, and um, now wait a minute. Oh, okay, yeah, so the number is telling you how many orders you'll have left after you move there. So I'm going to actually move over here. Harvesting. You spot some ore on a hill in the distance. Ore can be turned into iron by a mine, which can in turn be used to train warriors in a city. But first, we need to find a city site to build a city on. If the rumor of barbarians being encamped at the end of the valley is true, some warriors would be handy to have. Scouts can spend in order to harvest yields from a harvestable resource. To do so, click the basket button in the action panel on the left while your scout is selected and standing on the harvestable resource. Okay. Wow. So, we need iron to train warriors. Um, but, I mean, again, different from many 4Xs, this scout can just actually gather resources on the map. Um, okay, cool. So, I'm going to send them over here. And then while they're standing on this, it says move your scout onto the tile. Um, when your scout's on the tile, click the harvest action from the action panel. Okay, so the action panel uh, is over here. And I can just click it, and it says harvest ore. Your scout has harvested the ore. It may take a few turns for the tutorial gods to train some warriors for you. Continue exploring the valley with your scout. All right, the tutorial gods, be kind. All right. I got to say, um, I really like this. I really like the UI. It's super slick. I like the, the buttons on it. I like the strange kind of chanting music. Um, I think this looks incredibly deep and complex, but I'm very fortunate that they have a nice tutorial baked in. So let's keep going. Move up here. And we've got one more move left, so I'll just go all the way over here. And we're done, so end year. Um, yeah, the six button does it. That's so interesting. Okay. And we're Greece, and our scout is still looking around. And we'll just move over here. Oh boy, barbarians. Your scout has revealed a barbarian hovel on the riverbank. The lush countryside surrounding the camp would be ideal for your new captain. If only those pesky barbarians weren't in the way. Fortunately, the tutorial gods have used the ore you harvested to train some warriors. Normally, you'd train units in a city. The warrior is a melee unit and thus must be adjacent to an enemy unit to attack it. Click the warrior with the left mouse button to select it, then right-click on the red highlighted tile next to the barbarian camp to move there. Finally, with the warrior selected, right-click on the camp to attack it. You may continue to explore with your scout. Just be careful not to get too close to the barbarians with your scout in case they attack, since your scout cannot fight back. Okay, I will attack with my warrior. So, barbarians as they are in Civ, and, you know, in this part of the Western world, uh, were always... A problem depending on I guess which side of the fence you're on if you're on the barbarian side well then the Greeks would be the problem here but in our case 
we're going to select our warrior. Now, again, like, you know, if I was playing Thea or, you know, Master of Magic or Civ, this would be so far away. But in this game, I can move all the way over here. Now, this the warrior only gets three um, orders per turn. But anyway, um, this will take me two orders to move, and I will do this. Okay? And then with my last order, I'm going to left click. Now I do this, and I get this awesome graphic on the left of my warrior with eight attack uh, fighting the skirmisher. And this will do 12 damage to the skirmisher. And we can see I have eight attack. It has three defense base, and it's getting a 25% boost um, for being urban in its hovel. Um, and so you can see that 45% increase on 3 is exactly 4.3. Uh, and so that's the defense. And my attack damage, 8 attack minus 4.3 defense, somehow equals 12 hit points of damage. I don't know how that works, but I love the explanation of exactly what's going on here. So unlike, perhaps, we'll see, you know, Master of Magic, where there's a lot of dice rolling so that you're not exactly sure how much you're going to do. This is like a calculated decision. I know I'm going to do 12 damage. And it doesn't look like the skirmishers are going to get to retaliate against me. So let's just uh, do it. You've dealt them some damage, but these barbarians aren't done yet. By the way, again, I just... I like these little paintings in the tutorial windows. In fact, they appear to be occupying a city site. The map is full of city sites, which are the only locations where settlers can found new cities. Claim a city site for your nation by simply moving a unit onto it. You must defeat the barbarians before claiming the city site. Your warrior may only attack once per turn, so it will take a few turns to defeat the barbarians. The barbarians can of course attack you on their turn. Your warrior has already attacked this turn and is now on cooldown. Continue exploring with your scout and proceed to attack each turn with your warrior until you defeat the barbarians and take control of the city site. Okay. So, let's go ahead and um, uh, I push tab just to switch to my other unit. Cool. I like using keyboard commands sometimes instead of moving over to the button, but you can just press the button as well, and you can right-click the button to cycle in reverse order. And let's just continue exploring down here. I don't think the barbarians are going to come out. This will take one order to uncover all of this fog. Um, Alright, then hopefully I can get around here. Alright. And let's just go all the way over here. Just kind of loop around with our scout uncovering and uh, we are done so I'm just going to push 6 and the turn and they hit us for 2 okay so as they hit us for 2 what we're going to do is say what's what's this resource shortfall and um, covered debt I sold stuff to cover my debt and my unit got attacked okay Interesting. All right, we can just get rid of these little warnings. All right, so here's my warrior. And, oh, wow, look at all this stuff I can do. I can fortify, I can heal, um, but I'm not in friendly territory. And I think they said at the very beginning of this that uh, you are, like, the only... You don't have a nation, and there's established nations, and you're trying to kind of, like, sneak your way in there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead with our warrior selected. And right click here. Now this should do enough damage to finish them off. We did it. And it just says city site Greece. So we just captured it. And we've got our own city. And that's tremendous. Um, okay. Uh, they can move around, but... Okay, so attacking... Main, means I cannot um, fortify or heal because it put those actions on cooldown apparently. So let's just keep exploring. 
I'm curious about what's over here. Okay. Interesting. Greece has won a points victory. Boom. Ah, Bay Imperator, you have defeated the barbarians and taken control of the city-state. In this tutorial, we covered the basics of moving and attacking with units, map exploration, and city sites. In the next tutorial, you'll found your capital and get your economy up and running. I am ready. Tutorial 2, A Place to Live. Old World takes place in classical antiquity, focused around the Mediterranean Sea in the Middle East. Yes, yes, where you lead one of seven nations who left their mark on history. You begin with a single settler and must forge an empire in a world filled with already developed nations. So then, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe you are just one of the seven set nations. Uh, this is, is the second in a series of tutorials to help you learn the basics of Old World. These tutorials will not cover everything, indeed but will walk you through the basics of ruling a nation. You begin at the site of your successful battle with the barbarians from tutorial one. You will found your capital on the city site and build up a basic economy. Click the green start game button to proceed. Okay, hello, Philip of Greece. You are the leader of your nation, or what will be your nation. I am missing an eye. You begin this tutorial at the city site you captured in the last tutorial. Your task is to found your capital and expand to three cities. You will develop a basic economy and research some technologies. You will also promote a unit, assign a general to the unit, and then lead that unit into battle. Philip, are you ready to found Greece, build a nation, and write your legacy? Oh, yes, I'm Philip. Um, let's get some information about Philip. I'm bold. That's great. The capital is an important economic and government hub and the heart of your nation. Families are the leading clans of your empire with different dispositions and conflicting interests. They are granted control of your cities for which their particular bonuses are important to consider. You are currently playing as Philip, the ruler of Greece. Greece has the Argeid, um, Sipselid, Selik, Seleucid, and Alcmanoid families. Um, how about Alcmanoid? Boy, let me just apologize. I'm not pronouncing any of those right. But I'm going to go by the symbols. That, that helps me out. When your settler is selected, hover over the family action button to learn what effects they apply to your cities. You may only choose three of the four families in any one game, so choose wisely. Huh, that's neat. Now let's found our capital. Choose the settler and click on any of the families. So um, this family, these are champions, okay? Um, so I'm guessing they're just good with military. These are uh, schemers. Oh, artisans. Okay. Um, patrons. And sages. I will found a Greek capital. Okay. So, uh, mouse over. Select your settler. Alright. And then... Oh, okay. So, we can found... Here we go, here we go. This is... I mean, I could, like, try to read all of these buffs and figure it out, but let's just see what this says. Champions excel at military matters there. Cities have strong defense and train military units quickly. Any unit trained at a champion city will be steadfast. The first city founded by a champion's family, their family seat will be granted a militia. So if you start with a champion, you, like, get a military unit and you get a buff right there. Um, artisans generate extra culture and receive a significant bonus to mines and lumber mills. They are a good choice for areas with many hills and trees. The artisan family seat is granted a free worker and urban improvements for that city are built more quickly. So this is good for like working the land. Okay. Um, what do we have here? This is flat urban. Um... 
Oh, there's nothing here. Okay, so there's not that many. Um, it says hills and trees. I mean, there's like a little bit of a hill. That's a hill. That's urban flat. That's scrub. It's a mountain. And there's a forest over here. Patrons are focused on culture and specialists. Their cities produce extra civics, which allow them to train specialists more quickly, while each specialist, in turn, increases the patron city's culture yield. The patron family seat also grants a free court minister. Each patron city starts with a literature luxury, which can be used to boost or culture or gain favor. Okay, and then... The sages are focused on science and specialists. Their cities produce extra civics, which help them build specialists more quickly, and each specialist, in turn, increases the sage city's science. The sage family seat acquires a random technology upon being founded, granting an additional head start on research. Okay, so the obvious choice would be just go champions, so you have a military going, um, but... I love the idea of being just mad scientists, so we're going sages. Now that you have founded your capital, your people have a place to generate science. Science is spent on researching technologies which unlock improvements, units, and other items. Technology works like a card deck. You will be dealt some technology cards from the top of the draw pile and may choose one card to research. The technology cards not chosen are then placed in the discard pile. Any new technology cards unlocked in the technology tree also get placed in the discard pile. Once the draw piles empty, empty um, you shuffle them back. Okay. You may see what technology cards are in each pile by hovering the card icon at the bottom left. Wow, so there's a Civ um, mode like this where instead of the tree being set so you can plan out your order and everything, it's randomized like this. Uh, so that it's, you know, provides some variation. I like this. There's a, oh, there's a tabletop board game that I played, 7-something, that that's, reminds me of this um, mechanic. I like this. Uh, so as you research further into the technology tree, you'll need to generate more and more science to research technologies. It is important to not let other nations get too far ahead or at all, since they'll gain access to stronger and better units before you. Now let's choose the first technology to research. Your technology hand will be shown next. Choose one of the three technology cards from your hand after viewing the options. The technologies you do not choose will go to the discard pile. Okay. So, we can go for trapping, divination, or administration. Uh, interesting. So, Administration gives you access to a granary. Gr granaries are usually insane. Um, this would give us a slinger, which... And a camp. Yeah, let's go for trapping. So this way we'd have like a ranged attack unit and a camp for um, working with camels, you know, which seems to be vital. So I'm going to go with trapping. Uh, okay, workers. Uh, let's see. The worker is used to build infrastructure in your nation. You will need many workers to support your nation's economy. As a suggestion, you should consider at least one worker per city and a few extras to build roads or assist where needed. So this is very much like Civ. There are two main types of improvements, rural and urban. Rural improvements include farms, mines, quarries, and others. Rural improvements may be built on any non-urban tile and provide yields to your city. Resources such as wheat and ore provide bonuses when the correct improvement is built on them and a specialist is built to work the improvement. Mountain ranges provide a bonus to any quarry built adjacent to them. Urban improvements include the barracks, Odeon, and others. Urban improvements will expand your urban area by transforming the terrain underneath to urban. An urban improvement may also have a specialist which gives your city extra bonuses an urban specialist may be raised from apprentice to master and finally to elder. Wow, that's awesome. Each level increases the bonuses a city receives from the urban improvement. Let's start building the economy of our capital by building some rural improvements. To the north is a wheat tile. Move your worker onto the wheat tile and build a farm from the list of improvements in the action panel on the left screen. 
Improvements take a few turns to complete, during which time your worker will use one order per turn until the improvement is finished. Note that your worker has a hammer banner, your warrior has a sword banner, and your scout has an eyeglass banner. Okay, great. So here's my worker right here, and they said they want us to build a farm um, way over here. To the north is a wheat tile. Right. Can I turn on yields? There we go. So if I shift click it, yeah, so that that has a plus one food. And then, um, here we go. I can see wheat. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to move this worker over there. They won really fast. And then we're going to go to the actions and build a farm. This will give, um, what, two people per year? Is that what that means? Like I get two population boost or something? Um and we get a bunch of food per year. Okay. Great. So we're building a farm. I love how you can see the improvement and then you can see all of the bonuses that you can get to that improvement from, you know, it being lush or being next to a volcano or whatever it is. That's awesome. Click the next unit button on the bottom left to move to the next unit. Okay. Um, I'm just actually going to push the tab. Uh, training. Training is generated by your nation and spent on improving your units. A promotion is a great way to strengthen a unit. A unit may have more than one promotion depending on how much battle experience the unit has. Each promotion enhances a unit ability in some way. For example, Guard 1 improves a unit's defense strength. Let's give the warrior a promotion using some of your training stockpile. Select the warrior and using the action panel on the left of the screen, expand the promotion menu and select one. I will give my warrior a promotion using training. Okay. So um, we need to select the warrior, which we have selected. And then they want us to select a promotion over here. And it'll take 100 uh, training. And where is our training? Is it up here? We have 400. Okay. So promote it. And um, what do we want? Strike one. 10% damage, 10% energy, um, more damage across water, and bonus from trees. Um, give me strike. Your warrior has been promoted. Promotions are a great way to improve the abilities of your units. Generals also give extra abilities to units. A character, such as Philip, can be assigned as a general to a unit, contributing their unique bonuses to the unit. Assign a general by selecting a unit, then clicking the Add General button in the Action Panel on the left. A general, with the exception of the leader who may be added to any unit, must be from the same family as the unit. Oh wow, okay. Your warrior is currently on cooldown due to being promoted. Wait until next turn, then select your warrior and add Philip. Okay. Um, and then... We gotta wait till next turn, so it's... Uh, yep, let's explore. I was going to say, let's move our scout. The world around your city is unknown. What lies beyond the boundary of sight is a mystery. Scouts are great explorers, able to move and see a little further than other units. You have heard rumor of another barbarian camp to the east. Use your scout to explore to the east, where a city site is rumored to be. East is to the right of your capital. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I guess it's important to talk about orientation. I'll explore. I, I mean, that's just my foolish assumption that east is to the right, right? You know, like uh, I've I've heard that in Australia, they sell maps that have um, the world basically flipped over with Australia to the north. Um, and, you know, the map would look upside down to us, pointing out the arbitrary nature of how we just kind of like put Australia on the bottom of the world as if we've chosen like, you know, that north is up and that's important. Um, that's interesting. Okay, anyway. Uh, here's my scout, and here's my first concentric circle. And I believe that this darker line with these dots is showing me the border around Pella. Um, now, where do we want to explore? Um, 
to the east. All right. So I see the ocean down here. So I'm going to actually move. This will take two of their actions. Do they move freely within here? No. Interesting. I'm not reading that correctly. All right. Um, move here then. You've received a message that your scout has arrived at the rumored barbarian camp. There's lots of activity in the camp, plus a marauder guarding a marauder. 20 hit points, 3 defense. Continue exploring with your scout to map out all the eastern area. Use the trees near the barbarian camp to hide your scout so that the marauder is not able to see and thus attack them. Prepare your warrior to defeat the barbarian camp by completing the warrior goals. Okay, so this is fun. All right, so we're going to stealth around. Um, I'll move over here, and I can't move anymore, so hopefully I'm out of their range. It looks like I am. Like The, the dotted lines would be where they attack, um, but is that just a worker, or is that their unit? Anyway, um, we're going to just end the year. Okay, so now um, we are on the warrior unit, and we're going to go add general, and we're going to just add King Philip, the founder. Uh, and what does he give? Uh, he gives plus one movement, moves per order, um, a 15% attack boost, experience per year. All right, great. You've now given your warrior a promotion and assigned Philip as a general. Your warrior is now trained and ready for battle. As your warrior is currently on cooldown from adding a general, next turn use it to capture the city site in the east. Note, adding a promotion or general puts your unit on cooldown. In future, you will be able to move your unit before adding a promotion or general. While you had to add a promotion and a general to your warrior at the start of this tutorial, you may decide to delay these actions till later when your amount of training is higher. Okay, so... Um, they can't move because they're on cooldown. So let me just kind of go back to my scout and we can go over here and we can just hide in trees, I suppose. Scott, did I just get money? Or I just found a gold mine anyway. Move over here. Okay. End of turn. All right, so now my warrior is ready to rock, and um, we can move all the way over here, but we won't be able to attack. So instead, I'm going to move um, here. And just end the turn. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to move my scout. And my scout can't go over there. That must be the border of what we're allowed to see. Okay. Interesting. And that turn. You've now built a farm on the wheat tile. Building a farm will contribute food to your stockpile every turn. To the south of the capital, there is an iron ore tile. Build a mine on the ore tile to produce iron. Okay. Great. So let's take our worker. Um, well, uh, tooltip. The nested tooltip system in Old World allows windows to persist as you link from one to another. It's like Crusader Kings. Simply hold shift while clicking a link or click it with the middle mouse button to lock it in place. This lets you continue to view a window while opening more links, even if you move the cursor off the window altogether. Try it out on this unit link, Spearman. Press the escape key or click away from all two tooltip windows to make them disappear after they're locked. Okay, so I'm going to um, shift click Spearman. Is that what it is? Um, it didn't work. Now it did. Alright, um, so now it's locked, 
and you can push escape. Huh. Yeah, shift is not working for me. I wonder why. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let me see if it, how I did that again. Um, so you can lock it. What you have to do is uh, you're like you hover over it, and then you have to hold shift, and you don't actually click the word spearman. You have to move over to the box while you're holding shift, and it'll stay there. It's locked, and then you can click on it to lock it. It's not. I was trying to left click on the word Spearman. Okay, great. And I'm going to move you down here. And we need you to build a mine. And then we're going to have our warrior unit uh, just kind of roll over here. And I need you to hit these people. That's a good attack. And they can attack again. Oh, no, they're on cooldown, apparently. Wah, wah. Okay, and then let's see. Can you... Nope, you can't make it there. So then, why don't you go over here and just look around. Great. Goats, stuff everywhere. Fantastic. All right. They hit us. You've completed a settler in the capital. Move it toward the eastern city site. The old world is full of barbarians. It's a good idea to have a number of units to defend your nation. To help with this, build a warrior in your city. To build a warrior, click on the city banner, the banner on the map over the city site with the city's name on it to open the city screen. Items the city can build are listed in the left panel. At the moment, your city can only build a warrior. Click on the warrior button to place one in the queue, which shows from left to right at the bottom of your screen. Um, okay, so the settler is finished. All right. So we're going to click on the city, and then they want us to um, build a warrior. All right, so we have a warrior going. Okay, that's great. And we're going to push escape to close that out. And um, we need to capture the site, so let's attack. Oh, man, they still have, like, one hit point left. That's brutal. All right. Where can you explore? How about going over here? Okay. Landmark discovered. Etna. We get plus one legitimacy. Well, great. I love dis destroying, or I'm sorry, discovering uh, like wonders of the world or. Um, okay. Please complete all goals. Fine. Uh, this is my. Settler, which I guess we'll try to start moving you over here. And we'll end the year. They're going to hit us. They did a damage, which is surprising. And we got it. You've captured the eastern city site. To retain control of the site, you need to keep one of your units uh, on the central city site tile. You'll know who has control of a city site as the nation's name will be displayed on the tile. When your capital finishes building a settler, move it there and found your city. Okay, great. All right, so, yep, it does say Greece. And we'll just kind of go over to the settler and move here. You've arrived in the east and can now found your second city on the city site. Cities are your centers of population, production, and power. They collect yields such as money, food, iron, stone, wood, order, science, training, and civics. With your settler selected as you hover the mouse over each green highlighted urban tile, the initial city border will be displayed. The city border indicates which tiles can be improved to produce yields for that city. Move your settler to one of the green highlighted urban tiles and found your second city. Okay. Um, green highlighted urban tiles. All right. Uh, all 
I'm looking for... Here's a green tile. Uh, I could just found it right here, though, right? Or do they really want me to go to one of these? Sweet. I just found it right there. You are now known as Philip the Settler. You've now founded a city on the eastern city site. As your nation is new, it would be best to set this city to build a worker if you wish to build improvements or a warrior if you wish to strengthen your army. You, your brave warrior has suffered some damage, as indicated by the health bar above their unit banner. When units are within your nation's borders, they are able to heal some of their damage. You should click on the heal action to heal your warrior. Using all the skills you've learned so far, find the remaining city site to the west, clear the camp, and use another settler to found your third city. Okay, great. All right, so let's kind of just look around then. Now we can explore. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, we're looking over here, and this is my idle city. Oops. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I didn't mean to move into the cities. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. All right, so what do we want to build over here? Uh, let's just go ahead and get a warrior going. Um... That was just telling me to heal my warrior. In addition to technology cards, there are bonus and boost cards which give you free items. Bonus cards give you free units, such as a free settler. Boost cards give you free yield, such as a stone boost. Both bonuses and boost cards are unlocked by researching technologies. Grease begins the game already knowing drama, which opens the free settler card. Great. When unlocked, bonus and boost cards are placed in the technology discard pile. They will cycle into the draw pile and become available using the same rules as other technology cards. However, bonus and boost cards only become available once. If you do not choose a bonus or boost card when it's available to research, then it is removed from the game. Choose the free settler card now to gain a free settler. Okay, great. Um, we'll take a free settler. That's wonderful. And um, this is my warrior. You can heal. Okay, and then this, we want you to keep exploring until we find the barbarians to the west. Okay, and we haven't found them yet, so they must be to the north, I guess. All right, we'll end the turn. You've now built a mine on the ore tile. Building a mine will contribute iron to your stockpile every turn. To the east of the capital is a mountain range. Build a quarry near the mountain range to produce stone. The quarry can be built anywhere, but since we do not have a stone resource in our city border, we should instead build it next to the mountain range, which provides a bonus to quarries. Okay, so then let's go ahead and um, select our worker and they want us to build a quarry, and they want us to build it up here. So we'll go over here, and yep, we're next to two mountains, so we can build a quarry to give nine stone per year. Okay, and um, we're kind of gathering this, we're researching the free settler with our science, and our warrior here um, is now ready to go. I'm going to start moving them over this way. And you can go all the way up here. Please go here. And then end the year. Research of the free settler card is complete, granting you a free settler. If you do not have an opportunity to use your free settler yet, I'm sure one will present itself soon. I'm sure it will. Um, all right. Now, uh, let's see. What do we want to research now? Let's do administration. And then my warrior. Uh, no, I want to move my scout because... There it is. We found him. All right. So we've uncovered the barbarians. And I'm just going to push space on them. We're going to start moving the settler out. And the warrior needs to go over here. 
Uh, and we're done. You built a warrior. You may need them to build uh, to battle the barbarians. You may now choose something else to build. I have built a warrior. Indeed. All right. Um, let's go ahead and move these dudes over there. And just go ahead and attack. Chunk, chunk, chunk. And this warrior, yeah, you can go over there, sure. Um, this is our warrior here. I'm actually just going to have them uh, kind of garrison in the city. Is that a possibility? I'm just going to have tell them to wait. Uh... Why don't you go explore down there, I suppose? And they need to build something. Uh, can you please build us a slinger? No, not two, just one. Okay, I guess. Anyway. No, I already am researching administration, aren't I? I thought I was. Uh, you can build a slinger as well. And you can go over here into the trees. End the year. Uh, you've now built a quarry next to the mountain range. Building a quarry will contribute stone to your stockpile. You now have a basic rural economy at the capital. Over time, you'll be able to build both rural and urban improvements around your cities. Continue building improvements around your capital to further improve the economy. Sweet. All right, and let's just have this uh, warrior finish. Oh, they're going to try it. And we did it. We captured it. Great. And now... We need to just have our settler kind of roll over there. Oh, that's that's our warrior. That's the wrong thing. We'll get there next turn. And you are done upgrading that. What else can you upgrade? Uh, yeah, go over here and build a farm on that wheat tile. And then... I guess just promote that unit into a guard. That's cool. And what's down here? You've done it. All right. And let's just kind of go to our settler. Yep. And just walk right there. And found a city for uh, the artisans. And we did it. You founded a city on the Western City site. You now have the core of your nation. Finish any outstanding goals. I finished them all. We did it. Abe, you've cleared the barbarians from the region and founded three cities. You've also built a number of improvements around your capital to improve your economy. In this tutorial, we covered the basics of starting an economy and expanding your nation. In the next tutorial, you'll learn to interact with characters, families, and religions. Fantastic. Well, everyone, we completed the first tutorials, and we're really getting a great look at the game. I'm going nice and slowly so I can learn it, because it's, as you can see, it's extremely dense, but I really, really like what I see. I'd love to know what you guys think of this game. Have you played Old World? Um, do you like games like this? Does this look good? Do you have any tips or suggestions? Um, I'd like to talk to you in the comments below. It uh, seems like a really cool game so far, and I'm excited to kind of, you know, work through um, some of the tutorials, and then there's even Learn by Playing as well to just give you a good foothold to understand this really dense but fantastic-looking game. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Take care.